This pay-per-view is going to be extreme! Lee, not that extreme at all. I'm Chris Wolf with the Wrestling Vlog who always tells it like it is. WWE looked at the previous Extreme Rules, the one that accurately they accurately titled The Horror Show, and thought the same thing I thought at the time. Maybe we went just a bit too far. My stomach still churns just thinking of that eye for an eye match. <laughs> and because of that way of thinking, the WWE decided to overcompensate and make this year's offering the least extreme there ever was. Only one match has any kind of stipulation, and it's the same stip as the title of the event. Oh, sure, it has four other title matches. Not bad for a pay-per-view, just before a draft, really. And a sort of prove-your-worth women's match. But unless they change plans on some of these matches, the only other match that could get close to being extreme is the one with the women cha woman cha channeling the fiend's soul. Oh well, at least it's less matches to screw up in picking. Here are my predictions for Extreme Rules 2021. Sorry, Extreme Rules. Only non-title match on the docket is Liv Morgan versus Carmella. Carney, baby. If you're so afraid to mess that face up, perhaps you shouldn't have hung around those two Jersey boys while at NXT. People expect you to perform like you care not about your personal safety in that respect. Plus, you're technically a two-time Miz Money in the Bank, and that's one of the most brutal matches around. You're contradicting your own history, girl. But you do have Zelina ba Vega backing you up while Liv is the last member of the Riot Squad left, so I guess I have to go with the two-on-one this time. Winner is Carmella. SmackDown Tag Team Championships. The Usos defend against the Street Profits. I gotta say, I am looking forward to this battle. Two teams thick as thieves with each other. Two of the best teams on SmackDown today. Two teams that mix brutality with high-flying moves. I really want the Street Profits to win. I really do. But then again, I also really want them to enter the ring through the crowd like they did before the pandemic. And unless we reach herd immunity... Yeah, right. That ain't happening. Jimmy and Jay are too tight to make the bloodline embarrassed. Roman Reigns will excommunicate them if they lose. Not happening. Winners and still champs, the Usos. Triple threat match for the United States Championship. Damian Priest versus Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. Do they honestly think Priest and Sheamus can't carry a match on their own? Seriously? They have to drag that fossil, albeit loyal fossil, back into the fray? I thought Sheamus and Hardy were through after that ridiculous bar fight last year. If Priest wants to be treated as a worthy champion, he needs to stop beating on ex-world champ Redmonds and get some real competition. Jeff, it's high time you join your brother on AEW, if they even want you. And Sheamus... It's high time you replace the Notre Dame Leprechaun at home games. And Damien? Pray for better talent to face you. Winner and still champ Damien Priest. Smackdown Women's Championship rematch. Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. Look, as I said weeks ago, I have zero problem with Lynch being a champion again. After all, she had to give up a title to have her child. The way she got it back was distasteful at best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be Bel Air accepted the match at SummerSlam when the boss couldn't make it. But cheap shotting her and pinning her out of nowhere in less than a half a minute is not something the man should be doing. Like I said, the bitch is back. And as much as I'd like to see Bel Air get the title back, that would just send Lynch back to mothering her to her mothering duties. And I don't think she wants to do that yet. Winner and still champ Becky Lynch. Raw Women's Championship match. Charlotte Flair versus Alexa Bliss. Flair's climb to beat her disgraced father's title reign record continues. 
But in order to get to 16, she needs to lose a total of 15. Now, were you to tell me a few weeks ago if I thought Bliss had a chance in hell of taking the Queen's title? I'd have given it an adamantium hard pass. But now that it seems Bliss is being tolerated and even cheered by the masses? Well, like I said, Flair needs to lose more belts in order to top her papa. And I can think of worse people to lose to these days. Now let's give Bliss some more title time. As long as she keeps the damn doll out of it. Winner and new champion, Alexa Bliss. <coughs> Pardon. Finally, Extreme Rules match for the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns versus the Demon, Finn Balor. And there I thought the Demon was gone forever once Balor went back to NXT. Huh, <laughs> silly me. And the fact that it's Extreme Rules, where everything is legal as long as the fall takes place inside the ring, puts things heavily in Balor's favor. The Demon doesn't seem to care about the odds stacked against him. He will fight and fight and fight until he's exercised in order to win the title he never lost. But there's one little detail that perhaps the WWE should not have revealed until after the pay-per-view. They booked Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at Crown Jewel for the Universal Championship. If Balor wins the title, the Saudis will be so bummed that unless they change that main event to a triple threat, there'll be no placating them. Seriously, WWE, if you had to keep you had to keep your traps shut about Reigns Lesnar being a title match, if you had done that, this match might be more intriguing. As it is, we know who will win. And it's Roman Reigns. Thanks a lot. Those are my picks. I'll let the WWE Draft play itself out and be back in two weeks to analyze it. I'm Chris Wolver, the wrestling vlog who always tells it like it is. Stay safe, and I'll see you.